Hey y'all. Hola. Welcome to 30 Minutes Down South. She's Allison. And he's Carlos. And we are two top producing realtors. With two extremely different southern upbringings. Join us each week as we explore the Lake Murray area with our special guest. Welcome, Carlos. Look at you, still in my lines, <laughs> huh? <laughs> Alison, did you know that we've been doing this for over a year? Too long. Nah, I'm just kidding. No, it's just, just, just jokes. Just, just jokes. Just one year rook. I mean, like, it just, it just came out of nowhere. Like, we didn't have planned like a one year anniversary party for the podcast, and it just shows. Our five up. listeners might have shown up had we had it. <laughs> we've grown to more than five. We got seven. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> no, the, the coolest thing is that you know Facebook does this thing. You know, a memory. Oh yeah, the Facebook memories. And it pop up on my feed that one year ago we post our first one so i think it was on valentine's day wasn't it or somewhere around there i don't know but uh yeah one year doing this congratulations you you got so much better at it i have I except f- when i talk like this except when you're like <laughs> yeah <laughs> well alisa what are we going to talk about today so we have a really interesting guest today. We have mm-hmm. Joe Pollock. Um, I think I said that right. Yep. With his radio. And I'll be the first to admit. His radio is not Joe's radio, although it's Joe's radio because he works in there. But when you say it's his radio, you mean to hire entity. Yes, God's radio. His radio is the name of the station. H-I-S. I don't listen to FM radio hardly at all. So I was not familiar with this Mm -hmm. um, radio station, but coincidentally it came up in conversation yesterday with someone in our office who listens to it and was talking about how great it is. So I'm really excited to talk to him. Yeah. Yeah, me too. (laughs) Yeah. You don't seem as excited as I am, Carlos. Come on. I I I need to feel the energy. I like your energy. I do like your energy. (laughs) I really do. Okay. So how about we, we move that energy towards Joe? Let's go. And welcome, Joe Palik. How you doing today? How are you doing today, Joe? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Thanks, Joe. We really appreciate the time, and I'm excited to hear about what you have going on at your radio station. Yeah, so I work for His Radio, which is a Christian music network in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, and obviously uh, worldwide with uh, the app and the website and such, but um, our FM signals, the traditional terrestrial radio, is through the Carolinas and Georgia. Awesome. And when you say music, uh, Christian music, uh, what type of genres, of genres are we talking about? Of what? So, yeah, how did <laughs> you genres. Say, the gen- yeah. genres. I was like, what kind of genres are we talking about? <laughs> it's funny you say that, though, because I just had a conversation with a coworker the other day about this. Um, when I got started in Christian music 20, 25 years ago, there were separate genres of Christian. So there was uh, inspirational, which would be more of like traditional, softer praise and worship. And then you had adult contemporary, which is like the top 40 type hits. And then you would have... Uh, CHR, which is more of like the edgier, rockier stuff. Well, over the last decade, those different genres inside of the Christian music industry have all merged. And so really, the radio station now will play the inspirational, the adult contemporary, and the CHR all on the same station because we realize the audience has grown to be that. Uh, 20, 25 years ago, you did have a separation where some people only wanted the softer stuff or only wanted the edgier stuff. Well, now most people that listen, they actually do like my my mom is in her 70s and she likes the stuff that would be considered the edgier stuff. And so over the years, the format has merged to where now it's just if it's good Christian music, we're going to play it. That's awesome. Yeah, I think the edgier stuff is a little bit more moving. And, you know, in my opinion, it, it evokes more emotion sometimes and um I was at church Sunday and noticed some of the older crowd really rocking it out to some of the, (laughs) you know, the harder quote unquote songs. I was surprised to see that. Yeah. And it's, and honestly, like, it's not harder. It's not like your old Van Halen's or, uh, you know, Guns N' Roses or anything like that. But it is, you know, when you walk into a church, that's why they still have contemporary music and they have, 
um, the traditional service because there are older generations, even younger people that may want the traditional stuff. And then you would go to a contemporary service because people want more of the upbeat, um, edgier type stuff. And so uh, we've just noticed over the years in the industry that everything sort of merges. And so you can play that together on the same radio station and everybody's okay with it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So how long has his radio been around? So his radio has been around for 40 years now. Um, uh, Jim Campbell is our uh, uh, the guy who started it. He's our founder. He started a station in Tampa, Florida uh, called the Joy FM. And then a few years after that, he found uh, some, somebody offered him the station in Greenville, South Carolina, uh, the 40 years ago that he changed into his radio and started that. And so over the years, his radio has expanded. It started in Greenville, South Carolina, 40 years ago, and uh, sometimes they have been gifted stations where some whoever owned it said, we, we're not going to use this station anymore. Do you guys want it? And other stations, they have uh, became available via sale, and they had the resources to be able to purchase. And so uh, now we're in over nine markets throughout the Carolinas and Georgia, um, including Columbia, Charlotte, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, Savannah, Raleigh. And so all those markets have a full power s- station, but it's based in Greenville, South Carolina. Okay. Awesome. And you told me that as, as of right now, uh, first of all, what's the dial here in Columbia, in the Columbia area? So in Columbia, it's been about six or seven years that his radio has been around and it's on 92.1. 92.1. It, it's a good signal here in Columbia um, and they were able to get that. Uh, signal, like I said, about six or seven years ago. And so now it's just trying to get the word out about 92.1 specifically here in Columbia, because uh, there's another Christian radio station here that's been here for a long time. I actually used to work at it uh, and it was sold about a decade ago. Mm -hmm. And so it was sold to a national network. And so a lot of people were listening to that station because when it, before it was sold, it was the number one station in Columbia. Um, It had more listeners than any other station. And so it did very well. Um, And when the station was sold, obviously some listeners left and went listening for other stations. And his radio came into Columbia and wanted to be another uh, resource for people that they could have a choice of things to listen to. And so we're just trying to do our best to um, get the word out about his radio here in Columbia. I live in Columbia. I live in Chapin. Um, My studio that you see here is uh, is in Chapin at my house. I do everything remotely from from here. And so we are local. We try to do local things. We're in the community. We go to the Blowfish games, the Fireflies games. We um, we're at different concerts and events throughout the area. And we're here uh, because we want to be a local choice for people who want to listen to Christian music. Awesome. And on the business side, how do you, are you a non-profit? Uh, are you a for-profit? How do you survive? How do you make a, a living? The for radio. 40 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so for 40 years, we, we're a non-profit, non-commercial station. And so that means that we have to, it's, you know, kind of like the uh, the old um, the fundraisers that, that you you saw on TV where they'd have come on uh, like on PBS or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have to do those on-air fundraisers twice a year where we, um talk more often than normal and try to just remind people that we are uh, a a listener supported station. And so if people give, we're a 501 C three, so their give is tax deductible. And uh, for 40 years, we've been funded through listeners. And there's also another side of that. There's still listeners, but the business side where we have business sponsors that we're allowed to thank on the air. So if your business supports his radio, we can give you a thank you message on the air. Some people who don't know, would just say it sounds like a commercial. And I understand that because it it sort of does, but technically it's not a commercial. It's called an underwriting announcement, and it's basically a thank you to that business for their nonprofit support of our radio station. So through business sponsorships and listener sponsorships, that's how we're funded. We don't have Pepsi or Coca-Cola giving us millions of dollars as a commercial entity to support us. I love that y'all have stayed nonprofit over the years. That's great. Yeah, it and it it can be tough. I mean, yeah. raising money on the air is not easy. It, it's it's draining. It's exhausting. But this is how God has used this station for 40 years and set it up this way. He says he wants his people, you know, kind of like when you give at church. And we by no means am I ever saying give to us 
instead of your church. I would never tell anybody that. Um, we would always say give to your church first. But if you feel like the station is making a difference in the, your life or you're in your community's life, we would encourage you to to give as a, as another gift that you give back to God. And um, does his radio do sponsorships as well? I feel like I've seen the logo on flyers at some different church events and things. Absolutely. We um, Part of my job is to get out in Columbia and make us known. And so how we do that? Well, we sponsor things a lot. Um, the Saluda Shoals lights, the Christmas lights that you drive through, uh, we sponsor that every year so that we can get our logo there. So when people are driving through, they see our logo. Hopefully they change to us because we're playing Chris, uh, Christmas music at that time of year. And so we do that. Um, there's different events. There's concerts that we sponsor. Uh, the state, South Carolina State Fair we sponsor. So any place that has lots of people coming to it, an event like that, we would want to be a part of that. Uh, either in a sponsorship or even just being in person. We have a, a street team that we call the Fun Patrol. It's volunteers of people who listen to us, and they volunteer to come set up our table at these events and just get the word out about not only uh, his radio, but also about what God can do in your life. That's awesome. Cool. Um, I, I have a question, um, and it's obviously involving podcast. With the rise of podcasts in the last, I want to say, five years, five or six years, um, and you've been working, how long have you been working in this radio? I'm sorry. I've been working with his radio for two years, but I've been in Christian music for 20. 20 years. So you have a broad experience on on, on the radio signals. How, how do you see podcasts and how do you see the future of radio? Are people... More... Yeah, I think I think here's the thing. I've been in for t over 20 years. I've been in, in mm -hmm. the radio industry and for over 20 years, every year there's articles that come out saying radio is dying. Get out of radio while you can, because radio is dying. And I've heard that for over 20 years. And while things have changed, radio is not dying. But yes, if you are a radio station and you're only doing the traditional radio, your station is probably not going to survive. And that's why you see stations like ours. You can watch our morning show on TV. You can download our app and watch the video of it. You can, we have a, an Apple TV app. We have a Roku app so that you can, when you, instead of turning on the morning news, you can turn on our morning show on your TV and watch what's happening in the studio during the songs and, and also when they're talking. And so you have to adapt. We do a lot of things with video now because mm -hmm. people are doing what you and I are doing right now. They want to watch things and, and they want to listen in different ways. And so we stress, we have a mobile app that you can download. It's for free and you know, in the app store. And we stress downloading that app a lot because I work in radio. I don't own an FM stereo anywhere in my house. Yeah. Any, I, mean, I, I don't have an FM stereo. Nobody does. Well, I won't say nobody. But a lot of people don't. Uh, the only FM stereo I have is it's still in my car. And so in my house, I have a, an Alexa. I have the computer. I have smart speakers. So we need, to be, we need to be telling people that we are available for them to listen to us on those devices. Because if we don't and we're just an FM signal, then yes, we are, we're, we're going to ultimately lose. And so that's why it's important that we have our app, we have our Alexa devices, you can tell Alexa to listen to his radio, all that kind of stuff, so that now you have a way to listen to us. We're more than just an FM radio station. Um, and and podcasts are, it's interesting. I am not a podcast person. This is the second podcast I've been on, so maybe I need to start being <laughs> on Let podcast. me tell you, you feel like uh, a natural. Yeah, you're, you're, you're great. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clearly you've been in radio well, for 20 years, though. So. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm not a huge podcast person, and maybe that's because I work in radio. May, that may be different. But I know that a lot of people listen to podcasts. And so – and my daughter. My daughter doesn't listen to FM at radio. Um, she just turned 16, so when she got her license, she gets in the car. She immediately puts her music on her phone and Bluetooths her phone to the car. And so I know that this generation, the younger generation, we have to – as a radio station, we have to adapt to what they're doing. And so if we want you to listen to us, we have got to be in all these different resources. Our morning show puts out a podcast. So you, on your own time, 
Whenever you want, you can listen to the best parts of our morning show through a podcast. And once again, we, we have to adapt because if you're just an FM radio station, more and more people are not listening. But yeah. it's, radio still is successful. I mean, yeah. when I get in the car, I listen to FM radio. Um, and people still do. Now, they may be listening for shorter amounts of time, but they still are listening while they're in the car and in the house and through the app or even at work on the computer. Joe, who picks your music? Who says, okay, this song is good, this song is not good, we're playing this one, we're not playing this one? And So we have a, a, a guy on the team, his name is Brian, but he's our music director. Mm -hmm. So every so his job, he, and I talked to him last week about this. He says, you know, more often than not, the only thing he's doing is listening to new music. Uh, and so he has to go through and listen to the songs. And he, with us, a couple other people, he we have research. So there's websites that you can go to where you, as a listener, you can rate the music. And so his radio has a thing we call them the music influencers. We'll send you an email with about 15 song clips on it. Just a 10-second song clip. You listen to that 10 second, and then you say, hey, I love this song. Play it more. Or I don't like this song. Play it less. And then we take the 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 re results of that, and that can help sway what we do with the song. Like if we've been playing a song for a while, and you all say you all come back with those tests and say, "I'm tired of it. Stop playing it." Well, we know we need to we need to not play it so often. Um, so, and there's also national organizations who do that same type of research nationally. So we can look at those. We can look at um, what songs are popular in church. What songs are popular um, on streaming devices? We can look at all of those research numbers and decide which ones are we going to play on our station and for how long we're going to play those. So I'm curious about the morning show that you were talking about. What type of content is on there? Is it more sermon based? Is it just more music with uh, some talking in between? What does that look like? Uh, it's a, our morning show is a life. Uh, our station is a lifestyle station. We we are going to talk about our kids, our families, uh, the Super Bowl. We're going to talk about whatever is going on in the world, whatever is relating to you as a listener. That's what we're going to talk about. Um, we are not going to preach at you. We're not talking about sermons. Um, we want to be we want to be a representation of what you and your family would be talking about but we want to bring it to you in a biblical perspective. We want to make sure that, so we're, we're going to be family friendly. We're not going to ever say anything on the air that if you're driving with your kids in the back seat, that you'd be embarrassed for them to hear. Mm -hmm. um, but we're also going to talk about stuff in just a perspective that um, the worldview of a Christian worldview. So when we talk about the Super Bowl, we're not talking about the game because people listening to our station don't care about the nitty gritty of the game, but we may talk about the other things that have happened around the game. Um, you know, uh, the, the situation that happened at the chief's parade the other day. Yeah, that was where, terrible. Yes. And so we don't need to talk about the nitty gritty of that because maybe you have your first grader in the back seat who doesn't need to learn about that, but we will reference it in a way that you understand what's going on. And we're going to reference it in a way that we're praying for them. We're praying for the situation and we're, and If your kids are wondering why this happened, well, here's some resources of, of what we believe are, you know, will help you through that. So those are all types of things. We just come to it from a different worldview, but we're going to talk about things that happen every day in life. We're not uh, a sermon based or, or we're not going to preach about anything on the air. We're just here to encourage you uh, as you listen to good music. I love that. Good. And when you bring Christianity into the music that you play, into the message that you play, uh, has there been any situations when you have a Christian artist singing a non-Christian song or a Christian song made by a non-Christian artist? And if that's the case, do you still play it? What's like your uh, rules? Guidelines. Guidelines, kind of. yeah. So And that's hard. I can't totally speak on that because I don't choose the music for our station. But in general, there are there are singers, there are Christian musicians who have uh, become so popular that they've crossed over into the mainstream world. Um, for instance, Lauren Daigle. Lauren Daigle has a concert coming up in Columbia uh, in in February. Yeah, next She's weekend. She's very popular. Yeah, uh, Colonial Life Arena will be packed with tens of thousands of people. 
Some of them will be non-Christians at that concert because she is played on pop stations all across the country mm -hmm. because she has a, an Adele voice. It's a voice that a lot of people really love. It's beautiful. But she is a Christian. My, yeah. my 10 year old, I was, she, we're going, <laughs> she has to get set. Yeah. And, and people love her voice, but the message in her music is still the same. And when you go to her concert, you may not be a Christian because you hear her music and you think I like this sound, but she's on stage and she's talking about God and she's talk. she's not preaching. She's not going to get up there and preach, but she will talk about how God has impacted her life and maybe he can impact your life. Um, so there are musicians who have crossed over in that way. There are also other uh, musicians who they may put out a Christian song on their non-Christian album. And so the people who make those music decisions at our station just have to decide, is the song worth playing if it's by a non I, – I will say if it's by a non-Christian, but we don't know people's – faith, right? Everybody right. has yeah. a personal faith. We don't know what they believe or not, but but by the things made public about their life, is that appropriate to play that song on our station? So those are decisions that we prayerfully consider. And, you know, sometimes we may make the wrong decision and have to take it off or, or whatever. But um, those are decisions that are made by our team with prayer for consideration on on who the artist is and what the song is about. That was a good question. I wouldn't have even thought about that. Well, you know, that's that's why we're the yin and yang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you made the bad questions, I made the good questions. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> Joe, um that's that's I think that um that's very interesting. I never I never thought that I'm born and raised Catholic. Uh, I became Christian uh once I moved here to South Carolina. And one of the things that got me into it uh was going to the church and listening to the music. To be honest with you, the the person that got me into it was cutting my hair, and she was part of the band playing in church in here in Chapin Baptist. And she told me, "You gotta come and check us out." Like, uh, okay, uh, sure, uh, I will. Came in, look at them. There was this hard rock playing with all the lights, with all the <laughs> with, with smoke coming out, you know, yelling and delivering a really nice message in the song, and. That's what got me, you know. Um, how do you see the amount of Christian music? Do you see it growing? Do you see more, more and more every year? Because I feel that, and I feel like there is more and more options in the Christian music. I mean, eventually you're gonna get what mumble rap or something like that coming in. <laughs> I mean, any format of regular music, of mainstream music, there is in Christian music. There's the screamers. There's the hard rap there. I mean, pretty much anything that you can find musically, there is a Christian version of that. Um, and yes, Christian music is growing. There are Christian radio stations across the country that are number one in their city. So more people listen to their station than any other station in their city. Uh, and that is happening more and more and more. Christian music is one of the biggest um, music genres in the, in the country. And so, um, it's growing, and I think it's because we're. This is a hurting world. Yeah, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of frustration, and when you turn on a Christian music station, there's something different about it that you're not going to get from other stations. And the encouragement um, that you're going to get, it's going to help you stay focused throughout the day on the things that matter. And so, um, that's why I've been in Christian radio. I, look, I like country music. I, I like different genres. But the reason I wanted to work in this industry is because I've seen the difference that has um, God has used Christian music to make a difference in lives all across uh, the area. And so I want to be in a, working at a station that is making a difference in people's lives. Indeed. These are most, of the part, most of the time, it's just a, such a positive message. Uh, and like you said, encouragement. Um breaking breaking a little bit towards to what we always we, we are um, what we're seeing every day with social media with the news uh with uh, it's exhausting yeah and then it's like a breath of fresh air when you listen to a good positive message that understands you know yeah uh, it's a difficult world everybody has problems you know maybe your problems are bigger than mine but everybody has problems and you know just just encouragement. It's it's nice. It's nice to have. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 
Well, Joe, thank you so much. This has been very interesting and insightful, and I'm really looking forward to listening. Remind us again what the station is. Is So here in Columbia, it's 92.1. I'm on from 9 to noon, Monday through Fridays. Um, But we have great music and and great personalities on the station all day long that uh, I think you'll find a connection with if you give us a try. Okay, and if somebody wants to make a donation to your station, where do they find you? So hisradio.com is our website. We actually are in the middle of a building campaign, building a new building. It's We've been in this old building for 40 years with old equipment, and um, it's it, it was time for an upgrade. So we're in the middle of a building campaign, and obviously uh, we are listener-supported anyway. And so, yeah, hisradio.com uh, and the My His Radio mobile app in your app store. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time. No problem. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Joe. That was cool. He's a cool guy. Yeah, his is a cool station. Yeah, well, I think you need to start listening to it more often. I will, you know, and um, I used, I, we, we used to listen radio, FM radio, every morning uh, for the last five years, and then Damien discovered Spotify. Right. <laughs> well, the fact that he said they have an app, yeah. that's really cool, because we, um, we have one that's Alexa... Echo, the Amazon Echo mm-hmm. with Alexa on it in my kitchen. Yeah. So every night when I'm cooking and cleaning up the kitchen, I'll say, Alexa, play whatever. Now, now you can say, Alexa, play his radio That's or right. download the app. Yeah. You know, like he said, uh, I, I will download the app and I'm going to give it a shot because uh, one thing I really love about Christian music is the message. You know, mm-hmm. it is an empowering message, it, it is a healing message. And believe it or not, Music shapes. I, I am a true believer of music shapes the energy of your body. Oh, absolutely. And how many times has a song come on the radio or mm-hmm. on Spotify or whatever you're listening to, and it literally takes you back to where you were when you heard it yeah, before? Yeah, all the time. All you know, the time. Um, I feel like music is so impactful on our lives. Without going too deep, think about this, Alison. We are made. 75 percent of water right more 80 percent and Except some the older you get <laughs> anyway that's another <laughs> subject uh you always you always throw me off sorry oh, yeah, okay yeah. We're even made after of... one year doing this Alison, one year doing this all right our bodies are made of approximately 75 percent approximately 75 percent okay. to 80 percent of water and what happens when you put music on water? You see the shape. It sh- vibrates. It vibrates. You yes. see the shapes. So that happens to our, to our bodies too. Oh, I've never thought of that. Yeah. Remember when I told you about the Bob Marley music? Yes. That everybody yeah. it everybody likes something it. something in it, you know? I think the Christian music also has something in it. It has something in that message that goes into the background of your brain and vibrates and resonates through your entire mm-hmm. body. Positive music, it really empowers your brain, you know? Yeah. And when you when you listen to I had a I had a stage when I was just listening to all this uh heavy metal and hard rock. And I still like it, don't it get me makes wrong. Makes me feel like I'm gonna crawl out of my skin <laughs> when I listen to that. Don't get me wrong, I still listen to some of that stuff. You know, my son listened to all this mumble rap. God good thing is that we don't understand half of what they say. <laughs> <laughs> I probably, I, I definitely don't. Um, but yeah, it's it's a very important, it shapes, it shapes the energy. If you believe in that stuff, it shapes the energy. Of, it does. Of and I really liked how he said, you know, if you're listening to the radio station, they're talking about life events mm-hmm. and things going on in the world, but they're doing it in such a way that you can listen when your kids are in the car. Because that's a really hard thing for me. That's one reason we don't keep the TV on at the house, like on the news or anything like that, because you can't censor stuff when it pops up. And having a 7-year-old and 10-year-old who are, you know, very impressionable. Yeah, and that's um, tough to separate both, especially with the, that age range. Yes. And and. So, I, I, you know, I, it'll be a great thing to have on, you know, just in the car, not just positive, but to be able to know that, I'm not going to have to worry about something coming on or discuss that I don't want them to hear or that will cause me to make explanations that I'm not ready to give. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Mommy, what the beep means? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's hard. It's hard to avoid that. You know, it's very, very hard to avoid that, especially nowadays. You know, kids are connected with all type of uh, everything, electronics, and all type of messages coming out of them, and they're coming from different angles. They're coming from everywhere. They're, and, and even if they don't have it, even if your house like. In my house, for example, Devin didn't have phone until last year, you know, and he didn't have access to all of that. But his friends did. Exactly. And sometimes, you know, they get deeper and deeper into the rabbit hole of things. And either they don't ask you to explain stuff that they see because they think they know it all. Mm -hmm. Or you just don't get into try to explain and become a, you know, a dad that... Um, Let's talk about this later. Let's right. talk about this subject <laughs> later. Or oh my God, what do you what do you see? So it's a it's a like I said, it's a breath of fresh air to having an option out there that you can play, you know, and and listen to it and feel safe that yes. you're not gonna get into one of those um, situations when you probably don't want to be in <laughs> your morning <laughs> commute while dropping your kid at school, for example, or, or right. picking them up from school or, or, or taking them somewhere. Just they need uplifting, to be taken. easy listening. Yeah. So, all right. So if you're listening to this and give it a shot, give it a try. 92.1? 92.1 in Colombia. They're 40 years out, so they know what they're doing. They're, they're going to be playing good music and... Give it a shot. I'm, I'm definitely going to. I'm definitely going to put it on my... Uh, I've got to run, so I'm going to turn it on right now. You are? I am. I'll let you know what I think. <laughs> well, I am too. I am too. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much 30 that's minutes it? on the nose, right? Yep. All right. See you guys next weekend. Bye. Happy, happy anniversary. Happy first year. Uh, happy birthday to us. Bye.